Ladies, gentlemen, and other, welcome back to the channel. My name is Mark Roden, and today we are going over 10, of course. What else? 10 plus one honorable mention, so actually technically 11, of cards that you could find under 5K that you probably didn't know you could find under 5K. I just realized this room is really echoey. Actually, wait, maybe if I, maybe if I angle this way. Oh yeah, that's better. Uh, <laughs> today is, uh, we, yesterday we did top 10 cars under 10k that you probably didn't know are under 10k so today it is under 5k that you probably didn't know are under 5k then in a couple days we're going to do the one under 3k and then next week probably around there we're going to do the last cars that are available under one thousand dollars guys really quick before we get into the video i want to say over 80 percent of you guys aren't subscribed so if you just forgot to subscribe or if you want to support your boy please click the subscribe button i'd really really appreciate it I think of it as a christmas gift to me i'd really appreciate it but anyway guys let's get right into the video all right, so coming in at the number 10 spot is the Saab 900. Bunch of Saab boys on this channel now because I made a video about the Saab. You guys loved it. So, hey, everybody, here's your intro for the Saab. This little freaking pocket rocket of a race car comes with a 2-liter inline 4, making 131 horsepower, and it was front-wheel drive. Now, there is a turbocharged model of these. They do make a little bit more horsepower, but you're not going to find them under 5K, just the base model. So I want to make that very clear. I always thought these cars were like a little bit of a cult classic, and then they had just like a ridiculous price tag on them, but they're actually not. And honestly, they're probably a very good investment right now if you do buy one, because I can only see the love for the Saab 900 continuing to go up. Like everybody loves them. Who doesn't like the Saab 900 is a better question. So if you do buy one now, chances are in two years from now, you'll make money on it. Maybe even like double your money. And it's pretty good. That's a pretty good option for me. 5.3 liter V8 making 285 horsepower, and they are obviously a 4x4, meaning that if you don't put it in 4x4 mode, it's rear-wheel drive, but don't expect to like have fun drifting or racing this thing, because it's very, very heavy. Uh, it has plenty of space, obviously, because it's a massive SUV, so you can fit all your boys, you can have, you know, tea time in it. If you live in the UK, you can do whatever you want. It's also very safe, because you're like so high up off the ground, and you're like a monster, so if you hit into a car, they're just going to move out of the way. Number eight is the wonderful, the sexy, the car that I talk about all the time, but it seems like only I talk about it. It's the Honda Civic Si 8th generation. It's just such a new car and it's still kind of quick to me. And so that's kind of why I never thought they would be under $5,000 already, but it's actually pretty easy to find these under 5k mind blowing mind blowing anyway they come with a two liter inline four making 201 horsepower and they are front wheel drive. In my opinion, this is going to be mind blowing to some people, but the 8th gen sedan looks a lot better than the 8th gen coupes. I just want to say that like I don't I love them. But anyway, the 8th gen is reliable. Obviously, it doesn't look incredible, but it doesn't look bad either. It has tons of aftermarket support, and the engine in it is a K-series. So if you want to build a good power potential car, this is one of them. Numero 7. Triple seven, baby. It's the Mercedes C230K. I don't know like what generation like chassis code this would be, but it's like the older ones, the early 2000s ones. I just, the chassis codes for freaking Mercedes are just so confusing. I can't learn them. But I always thought these were like super legendary in the European world, but I guess not because they're still under 5K. They come with a 1.8 liter supercharged in line four, making 182 horsepower, and it is rear wheel drive, obviously. Now, this isn't, that's not the best horsepower, to be honest with you, 182 horsepower especially for having forced induction but they look very good they can look incredibly well when done right and they're incredibly comfortable because it's a mercedes so you're gonna have a comfortable good looking car that isn't the fastest but who cares coming in at the wonderful number six spot is of course the lexus sc400 it is this car is such a good combo like everything about the sc400 is good that i just thought that people would have realized that by now and so the prices would have been way higher than 5k but they're not as a matter of fact the sc300 is more expensive than the 400 and i understand that the 300 comes with a manual but the 400 is better in my opinion they come with a four liter v8 making 270 horsepower and they are rear wheel drive that is a lot of horsepower and as a yes it is a v8 so you might be like well that's unreliable wrong it's the 1UZ, which is the same motor that they put in the LS400, which is literally still to this day in 2022, one of the most reliable cars ever built. The SC400 is reliable as hell. It's luxurious as hell too. It's a pretty much more comfortable Toyota. It can be quick, but it's not like a quick off the line car or around corners or anything like that, just because it is a little bit heavy, but it has tons of aftermarket support. It's just, it's just so much, it's such a good platform. Coming in at the number five spot, however, 
is kind of the opposite. It's not the best platform out there, but they look freaking amazing. It is the Audi S4 B5, my good friend. It's another car that I always saw. It was kind of a legend in the European world. But now that I'm getting into the European world more and more, it, I'm starting to realize that these cars that I thought were legendary are just because I think they look cool. Uh, this one comes with a 2.7 liter twin turbocharged V6 that makes 250 horsepower and it was all wheel drive. The reason why they're so, the ones that I find are cheap is because I think they're just like not that reliable and the ones that i find are just have a little bit have a couple of issues because there are also a lot of s4 b5s that are well over the ten thousand dollar mark so it could just be because i'm either a getting lucky or b the ones i'm finding are in a little bit of rough condition uh but i will say that if you do pick one of these up whether it's a nice one or a bad one it's not going to be the cheapest to own they're not that reliable and the parts aren't that cheap for them but if you just want a car that's a blast to drive on the weekends and you can build insane power out of it this is a great option the number four spot, however, is going to a Honda. I know, you're probably like, another freaking Honda? Well, I like Hondas. I got an Integra now, and I like them. Comes, it's the Honda Prelude, fifth generation. It's technically the newest Honda Prelude, which hurts. But since you never see them, you may think that they're, you know, rare. And so that's why I put them here. They come with a 2.2 liter inline four, making 197 horsepower, and they are front-wheel drive. They're sadly not rear-wheel drive, even though they look like it. Tell me, tell me, a, look at a Prelude buddy and tell me that it doesn't look like a freaking rear wheel drive car it is like the epitome of a rear wheel drive car it's just so annoying uh they're very reliable obviously because they're a honda they look incredible in my opinion definitely one of the best hondas out there they're an absolutely amazing daily driver that can still be fun don't expect to fit like a bunch of your boys in the back though because it is a coupe and uh and oh also just like the saab 900 this car dude another good investment give this car another two years it's gonna be over 5k coming in at number three the bronze metal baby it is the Infiniti G35 Coupe. Uh, this is this one kind of hurt because to be honest, like five years ago, these cars were easily under 5K. But nowadays, it's like kind of hard to find them under 5K, and that's like that that kind of hurt. Not gonna lie, kind of hurt. They come with the same motor that's in the 350Z, actually, a 3.5 liter V6 that makes 306 horsepower, and they're rear-wheel drive. It's literally a better 350Z, and that hurts to say because I own a 350Z, but it's only due to the seats, and it's technically a little bit slower. Uh, you just have a little bit more seats, and the seat and the seating, you know, it's comfortable. It's more comfortable than the 350Z is what I'm trying to say, and you have more seats, but. It is technically a little bit slower, so kind of have to pick your poison there. Uh, they have a very decent interior for its time. They're very, very good power with tons of aftermarket support to make it faster, and you can just modify anything about the car because it's a G35. Um, and they're really reliable. People always say like, oh, 350Zs and G35s aren't reliable. No, they're reliable. It's just that the people that buy them don't know what the hell they're doing, or they neglected the hell out of it. Like, they, dude, VQs get neglected, and I, we need to stop it. Second place, however, is going to kind of the opposite, actually, of a G35. It is a BMW, my good friend, a BMW 328i E92, the E92 specifically because it looks so, like, classy, new, and sporty, and it's still under 5K. The E90 makes sense that it's under 5K, but the E92 is just like, what? That's such a nice-looking car. Uh, they come with a 3-liter inline 6, making 240 horsepower, and they are rear-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. You get to pick your little poison there. Uh, they can be loads of fun with simple mods, but... Once you start modifying these BMWs, that's when the reliability goes out the window. Stock an E92 328i is going to be reliable as hell. But if you start to modify this thing, expect it to be unreliable. Don't go onto your forums and be like, BMW suck. I'll break my wallet. Break my wallet. That's what it stands for. Because that's your fault. Uh, so please just don't mod the motor so it doesn't blow up. Uh, it's a Coupe 3 Series, though, that looks like a freaking 2015 car, but a 2009 car for under $5,000 with low miles. And in my opinion, that's just an incredible deal. The honorable mention for this evening is going to the Jeep Wrangler TJ. My dad has two of them and he likes them. So that's a good thing because he's a mechanic. They come with a four liter inline six making 175 horsepower and they are a four by four car, obviously. Uh, these things are loved by literally everybody and still are somehow under 5K. Now it is gonna be a little bit hard to find a TJ Wrangler under 5K, but it can be done. They're reliable as hell. They're one of the most reliable motors ever. Actually, the four liter inline six in these cars, great motor. And they're incredibly fun if you know how to use them. You just don't expect to like be going fast, obviously, but go off road, you're going to have a good time. And finally coming in at first place is, of course, a Hyundai Genesis Coupe BK1. If you know me, you know how much I love this little thing. They're just an incredibly sporty looking and very like new. Like these are 2010 plus cars and they're somehow already under 5K. That's just mind blowing to me. So that's why it gets number one spot. Like it looks like a 2015, 2016 car and it pretty much is a 2015, 2016 car. 
and it's under 5k now it is the bk1 i want to make that very clear but it's still mind-blowing they come with a two liter turbocharged inline four making 210 horsepower and they are rear wheel drive now the two 2.0 turbo is not that reliable so just be careful if you start to modify it and they're definitely not the fastest either but just like use it as a fun little daily they're rear wheel drive so you can you can be you know swinging donuts in your parking lots everywhere that you go if you want to and still getting to where you want to go on time and they look absolutely incredible like there's just nothing really wrong with it besides i will say the reliability does have a little bit of a qu it's, it's, it's questionable once you start to modify it but stock it's reliable as every other car is going to be but ladies and gentlemen that's the end of today's video i hope you enjoyed if you did please be sure to like comment and subscribe to the channel for more tomorrow i think we're going to be doing a deep dive video on the mitsubishi 3000 gt but i have to write the script and i also have to wrap a bunch of christmas presents tonight so i don't know because we i gotta figure it out like usually i write the script for those because it's that's a very long video it takes a lot of time to make them usually i write the script for it the night before because i don't have enough time to do it the next day it, it's just it's all you it's just a bunch of baloney but it might we might not even have a video tomorrow i know it sucks but it i might have to because like i said i have to wrap these script presents i have three days left to do it i'm not gonna be able to do it on saturday because i'm going out to my uncle's the whole day for christmas for there so it's just a bunch of stuff's going on so if there's no video tomorrow don't be surprised and i just want to say i'm sorry i hope everybody's having a good time besides that though thank you guys so much for watching i appreciate it i'll see you hopefully tomorrow das have a nice night